Louise, can I start by asking you, um, who or what was the catalyst for your interest in fashion? Two things, really. A who and a catalyst. I lived in the middle of nowhere. My mother luckily bought Vogue and was quite stylish. And you had to make your own clothes because you couldn't get to a shop. So the three things combined meant you had the skills and you had the dream because, of course, Vogue at that time was full of Janice Dickinson, who did not look like she looks like now. In fact, my wall was covered with her. And, of course, Jerry Hall, Anthony Price, people like that, Marie Helvin, they were all in Vogue. And it was another world that if you lived in the middle of nowhere, you didn't have access to. And was it the actual idea of fashion that inspired you, or was it the actual clothes? I don't think there was an inspiration, quite frankly. Luckily, I was good at art. In those days, you had art teachers that encouraged you. Um, you also had grants, of course, that meant you could go to college without much worry for you or your parents. And um, I was advised very early on to go to college. It was accepted you went to college in my family in that time. You went to college to do something you were good at. You didn't go to college to study history if you'd struggled to get a B at A level in it, which I thought was quite good advice myself. So that's why I went to fashion college. I did have a slight blip where I was going to trundle off and study business studies because it was near a lot of nightclubs, but my father did take me out into the garden and say, <laughs> in his advice, he thought I should take my place at St. Martin's and put the nightclubs and a certain type of men to one side. So we thanked him. So when you applied to St. Martin's, was it a huge risk, do you think, for you to get in? No. A risk how? Well, because obviously, you know, St. Martin's has this reputation of there's very few places where a lot of people apply. I don't think it did then. I think back in the 80s, I mean, it was considered the best art college then. And, um, but, oh, I suppose if you thought you were the best, you applied for the um, which is slightly goes against what I might say later to some of your questions that I've had a quick look at. Um, you were encouraged to, and I hope that happens today with art teachers and foundations, that if you're good, you apply, hopefully, for the best colleges, which is what I did. I mean, obviously, I wanted to go to London. I mean, at that point, there was no point studying fashion if you weren't in London. It's where everything was happening. You know, yo while I was studying, you know, that was when Yoji and Com showed in Paris, which was 81, a whole seismic change in fashion happened. You had the club scene and everything. So it was paramount to get to London. Was the expectation different to the reality? Was the expectation different to the reality? Well, there was nothing there. In terms of, in terms of what? Anything. I don't think we had desks. Um, but it didn't matter okay. because it was about the people it was about us as a core group of people it wasn't really about the tutors because I think that time has very much changed at St Martin's, I think there's a lot more tutors now and it's a lot more focused um, but it didn't matter, it didn't enter into it and I have to say it didn't enter into it because of course we weren't paying to be there we had grants and I know I'm obsessive about this but that devolved a lot of freedom to people to take a risk, to have an experimentation, to, to bum out for some weeks, basically. There, there was no pressure. It was you arrived and therefore you were glad you'd got there and therefore you did work and you had critiques and you had things that you had to aspire to. But basically you took risks and you made mistakes, which is part of growing up. And of course that has somewhat gone now when students are accruing huge amounts of debt feel an incredible amount of pressure and have a terrible need to succeed instead of letting life happen. Do you think the experience that you have then is, is, is totally different from you know, the experience that the students have now? Um, yes. No. No, because it hasn't changed in the fact you have to learn... It. The work is very similar, mm -hmm. except the outcome expected is much higher. You know, there were like I said, accidents happened. And the industry wasn't as demanding and it wasn't as quick and it didn't expect 
somebody to churn it out right. at the level they have to, like six, seven, eight collections a year. So it's a different pace, I would say, to the course. And because of the expectation, because the course does show in British Fashion Week and is the only one to do so, that's an added pressure on the students. We also showed in British Fashion Week when I graduated from the MA. Mm -hmm. But um, somehow it didn't seem, it wasn't quite as professional, shall we say. People still tripped up on the catwalk and, you know, not all models were professional and it was much more art school, shall we say. And that's kind of been eradicated in the final showing which is that's the sign of our times. Okay. So when did the decision come then to, to move more towards education? There's been no decision in my life. It's all been tragic, non-plan, okay. unlike people today that have sort of career plans. Mm. This is very introspective. I feel like I'm a Michael Parkinson. Yeah. Um, the decision came quite simply. I was travelling all over the world. I was working for denim companies. Um, I had a child. I would, most people from St. Martin's give back, they go back, they give talks, they, they part-time lecture. I was a part-time lecturer there and I, it was a perfect job at that point because you had long holidays so you could be with your son. Mm. They changed that though, so now you don't have long holidays of course. Okay. And so that's why I went into teaching. Mm. And do you think it was the right decision if, if you reflect back, back on it? What, now age 50? Yeah. I don't think you can look back. I mean, it is what it is. I've had a great time. I mean, I did leave at one point to go to head up Donna. I missed the youth at that time. I think it's a privilege to be amongst youth. I've said that. I mean, it's, it's hell and it's a privilege. I mean, it's definitely hell. You know, the, the idea that people that I teach are like they are when they leave, when they come, is so Freudianly fucked up for want of a better word because they are not mm. and it's really hard and it's really grueling and it's amazing the amount of people in the industry that don't understand that they think they come like that they miss the whole point that they're there to learn we're there supposedly to teach and the whole process is agony mm. and they only become people you'd even like to sort of say hello to when they leave mm. because at the whole point they were there they were nervous usually morons mm. quite frankly just going back a bit, when you mentioned you, you were working at St Martin's and you left to go and work at Don Caron for, for two years, mm. was, that a, was that a huge decision to do? Um, no, not really. Like everything. I mean, there was a, there was a, I mean, people will deny this, but there was a seismic change in education at the time, whereas if you were a doer, you were considerably out of favour. Um, it all became research-led, it became research-funded. Huge swathes of people that were in education were got rid of at that time, and uh, researchers, in inverted commas, were brought in to teach and lead courses so that courses could accrue points, and by accruing points, you accrued money from the government, which would be boring to anybody else, but that's fact. So I sort of got, as I do many times in life, I get incredibly angry, incredibly passionate, and thought, right, if that be the case, I'm going back out into industry. Okay. And off I trolled. Mm. And, and then I trolled back again. Okay. A lot of, you know, you receive a lot of press, Louise, and a lot is written about you. And, you know, journalists like to paint this picture of you as being very outspoken, quite fierce with your students, very demanding, um, almost aggressive. Um, Surely not. Apparently so. <laughs> but how, how does that make you feel? <laughs> So I think about it for about four minutes, get enraged, and then I move on to the next thing because I'm always so busy. Okay. I don't really think about it that much. I lead quite a boring life. Go home and lie on the bed, usually, exhausted. Um, it's best not to think about it. I mean, what I tried to do was, I mean, basically, uh, St. Martin's MA, that's what I run, and my name's become synonymous with St. Martin's fashion. I mean, obviously, a lot of the students on the MA come from the BA as well. Um, but I tried to use that press for the good of St Martin's in starting the Fashion Fund and trying to fundraise and be proactive. That's the only thing to do. Um, can you tell us a bit about that? Well, that's basically... Um, the college moved to King's Cross, mm -hmm. which is a mammoth building, but due to the cuts in education, the college has very little money. 
And um, fashion has a profile and an enormous goodwill within the industry. So we went out into the industry and asked if companies would support mm. the fashion schools, MA and BA, mm. which luckily they did. Mm. It was 20 founder donors. I think we had 24 in the end. In terms of teaching and, um, you know, how would you describe what sort of teacher you are, what educator? Is there a certain, you know, a style that would describe the way you work with your students? No because I don't know what other people do, and I've never really been that interested. Yeah. And that makes me sound really arrogant. I've never, do you know, I'm just very in the moment. Okay. I think I'm quite organized, but disorganized. Mm -hmm. I think, I don't know, I, I call it retraining. I mean, I've said in interviews before, by the time a student comes on the MA, they've probably been in education since they were five, mm -hmm. that's 20 years. It's longer than you'd be in jail for murder. You've then got to reprogram them because they've been in an education system where it was all about achieving a mark or ticking a learning outcome. But unfortunately, when you go out to get a job, not many people are concerned about the mark or the learning outcome. They're concerned about the work. Because I always believed that art, college and fashion was a visual medium. And what we have is a lot of students that want to talk a lot about it, but not necessarily do it. I suppose my style is trying to always, like, rock the boat a bit and get people to think for themselves. Of course, why would you say I think I'm aggressive? I don't know. People, of course, my partner says I'm aggressive. <laughs> so I think, I think teaching is a very stressful job. Do you often feel let down by your students? Oh, all the time, but that's really healthy. They probably feel let down by me. Okay. That's good. What, why is Makes it you good? bitter and twisted and... But you don't want to be bit interested. You get, you get let down. Yeah, of course you let down. They're young. Okay. It, it wouldn't be normal if they didn't let you down. Anyway, actually, rephrase that. They're not there. Actually, no, I don't feel let down by them. Okay. I think they've let down themselves. Okay. Because my life is, bizarrely, for the amount of hours I spend with them, it's not wrapped up in them okay. at all. Okay. On the other hand to that, has there been a student or students that have influenced you in any way? No. No. <laughs> Not at all? Influenced how? Well, I don't go to way. their houses, so I haven't had I any good ideas. I don't go to their houses, so I haven't had any good ideas on interiors. But have you, because do you keep in contact with some loads, of students? Loads, loads, loads. Okay, so you obviously have a personal connection with them. Like yeah, per around. personal collection, but connection, yeah. and collection. And collection. I collection them. Um, but uh, have they influenced me? No, because you wouldn't want another student to be like another student anyway. Okay. Um, have I admired some secretly? Yes. You know, profoundly talented, okay. an innate skill, and you don't want them to get swallowed by an industry that okay. doesn't understand them or whatever. But most of them have found their way through. Okay. Um, so yes, do I have admiration? Yes. And how about when you received the OBE, which is a, you know, a different sort of recognition? That, were you surprised or super pleased? Well, I didn't know I was getting it, so I was surprised when I opened the envelope. Okay. I thought it was a tax demand. Okay. I ripped it. That means the letter was ripped. That means I couldn't send it to my mother. But hey-ho, I just phoned up, I think it's St. James Palace, explained what had happened and asked, could they send me another letter so I could send it to my mother? Which I have to say, promptly they did. They did. That's very nice. Yes, very nice. So, but my, I've said this before in interviews to people who have been bored. My mother always said it's other buggers effort, and I think... That's true. Mm. I think a lot of people that get the OBE, if they analyse it, it's through other people's work, which okay. is a good thing. Mm. I'm not negating it. Mm. But, you know, that's through staff and students and the college, in a way. Okay. So you can't wear it. You get a really fabulous certificate signed by the Queen in a slightly different colour ink to the Duke. Okay. It's a slightly feminine... T I mean, that's quite well done. Mm. The certificate's fabulous. Okay. okay. The ink colour is divine colour of blue. Okay. Sorry, I'm just obsessing with my new tie there. Um, I, uh, it is interesting, actually, because mm. you don't know that bit, do you? Because you don't see that. Would you ever consider designing your own collection? 
No, because if I had, I would have by now. Okay. Why would, why would you not want to? I like working with teams of people and stimulating and bouncing ideas off. And I know you could do that mm. as your own collection, but you certainly couldn't do it now, I don't think. Okay. I think the time is different. Okay. It's younger. My knowledge is different. Mm. I think anybody designing their own collection, it, it really works when you don't actually know that much. Mm. Because if you did, you wouldn't do it. Okay. You kind of learn on the job. Okay. I think it's been proven by people that have worked many established places then do their own thing aren't that successful. I'm not going to name names, okay. but people that have worked for Prada and other companies, because you almost know too much and you want it to be too professional and that kind of rules you out of so much.